We've been working on replicating a subset of the Unix tail utility in Ruby. In the last episode, we found out how to seek backwards from the end of a file. We plan on using this ability to read successively earlier chunks from the end of a file until we find 10 lines worth of text. Let's see if we can make that happen. First, we'll set up a variable to track how many new lines we've found so far. We assume that the file ends with a new line, so we'll actually need to file the 11th to last new line in the file in order to locate the beginning of the 10th to last line. As before, we'll use a chunk size of 512 bytes. If you're wondering about the significance of that number, first, it's a power of 2. Second, it's small enough that we're unlikely to find 10 new lines in the first chunk, which will force us to figure out the logic needed to keep working backwards until we have enough text. We initialize a variable called next chunk offset to track how far back in the file to read the next chunk from. Next, we open the target file and seek backwards 512 bytes. We save the absolute offset of the file after the seek, and then read in a chunk of text. Remember, this will have the side effect of setting the file's offset back to the end of the file. Now that we have a text chunk, we can update the new line count by counting the new lines in it. Now we need to decide whether to fetch more chunks. What are the criteria for making this decision? First, if we happen to read from a zero-length file, the read would have returned nil instead of a string. That's also why we explicitly converted the chunk to a string before counting new lines. So we only want to continue if the chunk is non-nil. Second, if we've reached the beginning of the file, then we need to stop. Third, once we've found 11 new lines, our job is done, so we need to check for that as well. Within the loop, we decrement the next chunk offset by another 512 bytes. Then we go through a very familiar series of steps. Seek backwards, save the start position, read a chunk, and add to the new line count. That gives us what we need to loop backwards until 10 lines worth of text are found. We can see this when we look at the ending new line count. But this code is clearly less than optimal. Let's see if we can do away with some of the duplication here. The awkwardness of this code is brought about by the fact that we are effectively executing one iteration of the loop before the first test of the loop condition. There is a name for this, a do-while loop. Many languages have a special do-while syntax for just this situation. The loop starts with a do and ends with a while clause. But what about in Ruby? Do while is not valid Ruby syntax, but does it have an equivalent? Let's first look at a Ruby syntax you may have used already. You might know that the while keyword isn't just used at the beginning of a loop block. It can also act as a statement modifier. Here's some code where a simple predicate method decrements a number every time it is called, and then checks if it has reached zero. When we use this as a statement modifier, we can see that first the loop condition is checked, and then the loop body, on the left side of the while modifier, is executed. Something interesting happens if we surround the loop body with a begin-end block. If you're not familiar with begin-end, it's a way to group several lines together into a single expression, allowing us to apply things like statement modifiers to the whole block as a unit. When we put a while modifier after a begin-end block, the order of the output reverses. We can see that now the block body is executed before the first time the loop condition is checked. This special rule for begin end blocks enables us to write the equivalent of a do while loop. Let's rewrite our tail code to use this construct. We move the while statement to the end of the block and start the block with a begin instead. Then we get rid of the initial seek, the saving of the chunk start offset, the chunk read, and the updating of the new line count we move the remaining next chunk offset calculation to the bottom of the loop. And that's it! We've eliminated the duplication in this code by transforming the loop into a do-while version. We're now one step closer to implementing tail in Ruby. Next time we revisit this problem, we'll start searching for the beginnings of lines instead of just counting new line characters. Until then, happy hacking!